Good morning, greetings. We've got a few folks on the line. Welcome to our last meeting of this particular TOC. Hello. Is everybody very quiet today or have I got my sound off? No, no, you're actually just fine. I was, I was I realized that my sound was actually like it just it randomly chose some other outlet. It was like, why is why is something talking from a corner over here? It should be talking in here. What is this? <laughs> it's a constant delight that <laughs> giving folks a few more minutes to be able to come on it yeah no it's delight like the zoom randomly choosing input mics randomly choosing output mics it's delight computers they work sometimes hooray occasionally <laughs> <laughs> a good time is had by all i love the age-old adage of it does exactly what we tell it to do and i would argue that's not really accurate anymore <laughs> <laughs> It's as if I had any sort of intent, which I don't think is really accurate anymore. Just giving folks a few more minutes to be able to come on in. Liz, with 31 folks on deck, I'm going to say, like, ready when you are. All right. Let's see if I can find the agenda. <laughs> Here we go. All right. It is updates today. My last updates as chair. So uh, you don't have to put with me any longer. All right. Uh, although I'm sure I will still be around and poking my nose in every now and again. So uh, let's move on to tag app delivery. That is correct. There's a note in chat. Um, uh, like there is four more hours for the TOC elections. If you are one of the selecting groups and you should be voting, like, like getting in and voting, please, 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 please do so. Because once it closes, it's done. The end. Yay. There are some excellent people who've put themselves forward. Thank you to every single person who has done that. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not seeing anybody directly unmute for our app delivery folks. I'm happy to come back to them. Okay. Yeah, yes. pick them a bit. We'll, we'll... Let's move on through. If somebody can make Quick themselves update. known if they are for app delivery, we'll come back to you. Absolutely. How, how about contributor strategy? Hi. Uh, so uh, Josh Burke is here. Um, <laughs> Uh, just keeping on with our usual stuff. Um, one of the things we've been working with is um, uh, some of the marketing folks to actually start raising awareness within the CNCF projects um, about the resources that we have available and that we've generated um, from contributor strategy, um, also for uh, tag security as well. Um, since they have a lot of important resources for projects. And I don't think the majority of our project maintainers know about them. Um, the, um, um, in the meantime, we've continued to add stuff. Um, uh, the values in README templates are only awaiting um, TOC liaison approval. Um, and then those will become public. Um, the contributor growth has um, started work on a reviewing guide um, for projects to um, generate how to review documents, um, which is something that's recommended but not required by any of the graduation stages. Um, uh, and we'll have a maintainer circle sometime soon. Um, I'll look for announcements there. 
um, the, um, I've not had a chance yet to file a TOC proposal and at this point. I'll wait for the new TOC to be seated um, that CNCF wide mentorship um, as you who are requested um, be officially assigned under contributor strategy. So um, I'll do that after the new TOC is seated. Sounds good. As far as your 2022 PR campaign, um, my suggestion is to be able to use the TOC list because one, it's huge. There's, there's tons of people in there and that's really where you're going to get to be able to probably the most eyes on it. Yeah, but I think we need to go outside of just the mailing lists though because yes. we're really trying to reach project maintainers and I'm not convinced that they actually read any of the CNCF mailing lists. All right, that's fine. And I will keep an eye out for uh, maintainer circle. So thank you. Cool. Okay. I th that sounds like some really um, useful feedback that could come from maintainer circle about whether mailing lists are the best format for Slack or, you know, what is the best way to yeah. have those kind of conversations. Yeah. We've, we've gone around on that. The problem is that your average project maintainer is an overbooked person. And so there really isn't any one good way to reach them. And I think too, I mean, anything with people, right? Different people are going to respond to different formats. So some people are really great at email. Some people are better at Twitter. Some people like blog posts. So we're thinking if we can hit people from multiple channels, we can better get the word out. Totally makes sense. Anything else, any more questions for contributor strategy? Lots of good feelings from Chad, hooray. Thank you. Oh, app Hang delivery is here now, lovely. Oh, so, should we go back to app delivery yeah, then? Lee, hold that thought. You get like a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, sorry for being late, but it was one, it's one of those days where I'm back to back and uh, <laughs> Time zones are great, but time is still linear, uh, which is sometimes painful. <laughs> um, yeah, so a quick update on the app delivery side. Um, on project reviews, uh, just a reminder that Captain and Backstage are still in the review by the TUC. You also asked us on some feedback on Conveyor. And by the way, this is the feedback really here for the TUC that you asked us for. We are also on a separate track. We're going to discuss with the Conveyor team on how we really want to progress there. So we just don't want them to hand like back, okay, this is what we think about your project. So very high level on conveyor. So for those of you not familiar, it's more or less a set of tools that emerged out of uh, some consultancy on the, on the IBM and, and, and Red Hat side for migrating applications over from traditional environments to a cloud native uh, world. And we, we, we had a really hard time wrapping our head around this. So first we think, I think it's good that there is, it was always part of the charter also for app delivery to help people migrate um, applications over. But when we looked at the project, we found a couple of things that were not, that I think they, have, they would have to work on anyways before moving into Sandbox. Like they use different licenses. So some are MIT, some are Apache too. So this is something that they would have to work out also deployment mechanisms are different. So for some you have Kubernetes-based deployments, others are Docker Compose-based uh, deployments that are kind of available. So it, it feels like it's a set of smaller tools that are put together. Some of them are actually even Grafana dashboards. I think there needs to be some housekeeping that needs to be done on the project. Um, some I would move entirely out, like there's some OpenShift 3 to OpenShift 4 migration tooling in there, which I don't see is going to live very long. There's an interesting project of migrating virtual machines to KubeVirt. There the question is, shouldn't this actually be part of KubeVirt per se, where it might be a better home for it and it might fit in there? So yeah, I think our overall feeling is a set of tools that they kind of have built out. And like one of their core tools is more or less an assessment tool that comes kind of like with this consulting background-ish. Uh, and that's, I think where we still, and we'll, we'll follow up with them. I think some bits and pieces is still something we need to 
uh, wrap our, wrap our head around it. But I think that the way it, it is right now, I wouldn't see really how it fits into as a sandbox project. And again, it also has to think it's never going to really graduate because it's a set of uh, conversion goals. So somebody, yeah, we, I know we had these discussions on the submission before, and you already have in your calendar a follow-up on some of this. Hey, this is, uh, this is James Labakia. Yeah, so I'm, I'm involved in the conveyor project. So thanks for the update. I, I was gonna ask, is there a way we can get this feedback faster going forward? I, I put a link, I posted this because after we submitted the sandbox application, I went to the, the tag app delivery uh, meetings starting in November and I asked you know, for feedback. I, I got a couple of questions in there. And so I tried to answer them in this mailing list thread, but then I haven't had any replies. Um, and then I showed up last meeting and um, I forget who was there. It was Thomas maybe. And, Thomas and, was there, yeah. Yeah, and he, he but he, he said, I can't remember like the specifics because I'm like, yeah, it's good to hear like, okay, if licensing is a problem in deployment method, if we would have known two months ago, we probably would have already, <laughs> we probably could have already standardized on one and moved it forward if those are the things. But I think just getting that feedback faster would be very helpful. Yeah, we tried to do our best with the constraints which we're in and we also reached out to work with you on this. So feedback is taken, but yeah, there was always a holiday break in between. On, on other topics, uh, awareness for the working group is also something we're working on um, because one of the feedbacks from KubeCon was, hey, you guys actually exist, which was kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, we, we do exist. So we're currently working on a blog post, introducing a bit more of the tech work that we're doing and also planning to do an app delivery day around uh, KubeCon, like dedicatedly focusing on app delivery. Anybody who has done this before, I think security has done it, your feedback is highly appreciated on how you set this up and make this work. Because I think most of the pre-conference events are more or less focused towards companies and not the techs are setting them up so much. But we plan to really um, get this done for the upcoming KubeCon to have more of the app delivery conversations happening there as well. That's it from app delivery. That's amazing. I'm going to guess that there is not a lot of lead time for getting that co-located event up and running. So probably, t you know, time is of the essence, but I think that's a, a really good uh, thing to try and put together. The security con folks, tag security, definitely had a ton of experience on how they got theirs off the ground. So that would definitely uh, sync with them. Any questions for Tag App Delivery? All right, so should we move on to network? Hello. The, um, now you're up. Really, there's uh, kind of two topics today. Um, one is just, I think, I think we've only met as a tag once since last we gave an update and the focus of the discussions had been within the working group on and uh progress toward um, one of the long-term goals that that is that the working group has had and that's like to going through just a large set of test scenarios for evaluating characterizing performance um across different service meshes and different um configurations but uh, so as of today, a couple of the maintainers have access to the CNCF cluster. Um, so we met with Equinix Metal. I tried to familiarize with the environment a bit or sort of describe the, the, on, the, the nature of the tests and then sort of the ongoing um, goals. And uh, so, so progress there. Um, there is an open call in the working group for participation for the folks that are well, I'm gonna abuse the term since everyone else does, I suppose. And that's to say that folks that are more into DevOps <laughs> or more into um, in tooling than they are necessarily into code. And so come and participate. And so there's um, help needed in that project. The part of the project goal is to have a, a public, facing, public facing dashboard of those performance results. So there's a request for engagement there as well. That's kind of, that's the update from the working group. 
There is um, the last project that was proposed for Sandbox is Fab Edge. There's a there's an active thread in the TOC mailing list, um, sort of you know discussing the the project, and uh, the code chair um, Ed, who was kind of deep diving toward Fab Edge, he's got a conflict today. So Ken, who's also a co-chair, is on the call. Ken, I don't know that either Ken or myself, I don't have a have a response. Like it's just it's not a project that. Um, that I've spent time with yet. They did present. Um, it's a, a couple of things to take away, I suppose. It's, it's well, it's a new project, um, pr pretty, pretty young. It's, I think it's, it's grown twofold since they presented a couple of months ago, which is maybe less about project growth and more about how that, that it's uh, early. Uh, so, uh, you know, the fact that it's going through um, diligence and some additional questions, I think it's probably, probably healthy. Well, it's healthy for the project in general, but also gives the project a little bit of time to mature as it goes to be considered. So um, Liz, I know you, you'd taken just a, a moment to uh, look at the project. Did, was the la is the thread closed in your mind or is there still some feedback that would be some additional context that would be. I think there was definitely some more information in that thread that was helping to clarify it. I think the it was unclear whether or not Fabedge was sort of trying to, well, trying to is the wrong word, whether it is a Kubernetes CNI that people could slot in, you know, like any other CNI. And my impression is that, oh, well, actually there is a, a sort of, another class of CNI that is not for pod to pod connectivity, but that uses the CNI to provide the edge connectivity, which I think makes sense. Sounds like it's gonna potentially cause some confusion. So maybe we need the kind of CNI project to the sort of weigh in on how they want to describe that or classify classify that or, or something. Cause I, I, I I guess people won't go very far down a road of saying, oh, we'll use this CNI and then discovering that actually it's, it's an edge specific CNI. But uh, that, that was one of the things that we were a bit worried about. Um, I think also when we were looking at that sandbox proposal, there was, I think from memory, some, we were unclear how it fits with the cube edge project and whether or not there's, overlap their consolidation that should be considered that yeah. aspect i don't think is clear i think in terms of whether the thread is closed or not if the proposal is you know i think the the toc next um sandbox review meeting would look at that again i'll do i'll i'll poke ed on the subject and then as well as um, I'll send a quick note to while we're on the call. I'll send a quick note to the CNI um, team to to have them to ask if they have a qualifications as to what they consider in and out of bounds in terms of that term or in terms of yeah, the, that sounds good. And there are other projects. Like Submariner is a good example of another project that you know is focused on node to node uh, things. And actually, it would be good to like just reflect on Submariner and, and whether or not they use. CNI as a term, they affiliate as being a CNI or not. And so, yeah, a couple of examples. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Lee, I think you might want to involve some of the folks on the QVEG project. And I think there's uh, two other projects that are, are working uh, with technologies related to the edge, uh, Super Edge and Open Yurt. So, and I think it's the idea is just to have more clarification among the, the different projects of you know what's supported and not supported. Because like, I think there was some confusion about, you know, cube edge uh, and what was on the documentation about what fab edge supports. Uh, so I think it will be great to have that clarification. Yeah. Anyways. That's good feedback. We had asked some of yeah, like I can't, it's unclear. Yeah, some of the, uh, I don't. Some of the presentation was a bit unclear to me when it was originally um, proposed. We did give feedback, and some of those were the, the same questions. Was like, 
was clarification on which which was which and what the purpose was. And so he, um, the maintainer that was proposing did come back with some of those, some uh, clarification. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll reinforce that messaging. And maybe actually, Ricardo, I think to your point, I guess your, your suggestion is, hey, it would be helpful to hear from those other projects about how it is that they, they characterize, they, they posture and characterize the difference. Yeah, yeah, and I can help you with Cube Edge and those projects because they have actually presented in in tag runtime. So and so hopefully that that really you know, help. Um, yeah, yeah, just ping me afterwards. So. Any other questions for network? Uh, Lee, quick question from uh, this is Dims. Uh, how frequently are those performance tests? Uh, is it are, are we going to run them every day, every six months? Uh, what's the frequency? Yeah, but the, the vision there is that um, the, the hope is like every day. The vision is that the, the, the tooling, is av tooling is available to each of the service mesh projects to do it themselves. Like each of the projects are going to have an opinion about what the particular test scenarios are and then may want to, like the, the part of the goal of the project is to um, focus on the strengths of each of the, those service meshes in, in context of their performance, uh, acknowledge where they're weak or maybe what, what scenarios, what workloads or what deployment styles maybe don't work very well for them. But, but so is to, anyway, the tooling is, is open. I mean, we're hopeful that each of the projects would come and weigh in on what the scenarios are and then actually take the tooling and integrate it into their um, build and release into their CI su such that they can be self-reporting. There's, there's mechanisms in there to, um, uh, to let them, do, kind of like you would do a, con a conformance test in a similar way if they're running their own performance, they can report in that performance. So okay. the concise answer is daily. Like the concise answer is there's a, there's a more, there's a combinatorial factorial like permutation set of uh, all the scenarios that could be run and they're all valid actually that <laughs> some some are much more useful than others to the extent that they're very representative that's actually another area that we've been um seeking input from users on is like which of these scenarios looks like you <laughs> which like of these would be yeah yeah, uh, the main reason for asking the question is uh, there's a tendency for these kinds of things to like be dropped quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the reason for asking. Thank you. I think that it under, yeah, I think that it undoes the value. If it's a, if it's a one shot thing or an every six month thing, I think that the part of the value that it could potentially provide is undone. Any more for Tech Network? Thank you, Lee. Observability next. Yeah. Hello. Um, uh, I'll be brief and bright uh, and then gone. Uh, uh, in the last uh, few meetings, um, uh, we've had a lot of engagement with uh, other parts of the CNCF. So for example, at the end of December, uh, Scott Rigby from the GitOps working group came uh, to the TAG meeting um, uh, to provide some uh, logistical and kind of like a, a heads up on how to launch something uh, similar to uh, Open GitOps. Uh, the GitOps working group uh, as part of TAG app deploy launched uh, OpenGitOps.dev as its own project with its own lifespan. Um, uh, we took some advice from Chris uh, last year, uh, and we kind of, uh, you know, started uh, filling out uh, a project plan for Observe Kates, which I'll, I'll get to in, in a moment. Uh, in today's meeting, uh, we have Catherine uh, Paganini from the Glossary Project, the Business Value Subcommittee. Um, uh, there's a clear opportunity to to help contribute observability terms to the Glossary Project. Uh, in addition. Uh, Bumblebee uh, joins us to discuss the project. Uh, Solo.io, a, a CNCF member, uh, has open sourced this. It's an eBPF toolkit. Um, 
Uh, so they're going to come give a, a brief overview uh, of, of what the project is and, and say hello for the first time. Uh, in future meetings, we'd really like to uh, invite other projects in the observability space that are that are relevant. Um, uh, for example, Hubble, we would love to have Hubble come give a deep dive or an overview for, for the observability community um, uh, about you know, how it's using eBPF and just uh, uh, what it is and how it works. Um, we're not presently engaged with the cartographer house working group. Uh, there's just not enough, uh, not enough human resources. So uh, there's a big opportunity if anyone wants to contribute there or in many other ways. Um, and obviously other uh, uh, projects, maintainers, uh, you know, pr pretty much whomever uh, is in, in our big tent is welcome to come uh, present topics and, and discuss things. Uh, we have an open agenda. Uh, so I mentioned it before, but uh, there's a project called Observe-K8s that we've launched. Uh, well, we're in early planning for. Um, Q1 will be really planning and nailing down uh, the project plan and resourcing and things like that. Uh, we expect to be uh, actively working on this in Q2 and Q3. Uh, expect an email from me later on today, uh, formally requesting the TOC to kind of uh, approve the working group, I believe is the, the process, but we've been doing this over the last a uh, few months, again, um, uh, with some guidance from folks on the call last year uh, to, to build some interest. And so uh, Michael Hasenblas from AWS uh, and Ken Finnegan from Workday, uh, myself uh, and um, Daniel Kahn uh, and a, a number of others uh, have all contributed to uh, a working document that is sort of charter mission and overall concept uh, that I've linked in the slides. Uh, and we expect to, to close down on that uh, as well. Uh, so we'll announce uh, a public nomination period for working group uh, uh, chairs, uh, and we are excited to launch that. Uh, we have also secured the observe Kate's, uh, .io domains and things like that, and plan to transfer all of that uh, to the CNCF uh, if, if, if approved and uh, if it makes sense to do so. In short, uh, what it is, uh, is it's a curated community-driven, um, you know, set of clonable uh, representative apps uh, with examples of how to uh, instrument them and or uh, grok, you know, what it is that they're doing uh, with useful examples of CNCF uh, projects and tooling uh, brought to bear. Uh, this is not the tag saying this is the right way to do it. This is the tag saying we're launching a project and projects in the space, which we'll be reaching out to, are welcome to contribute to it, and we encourage it, and uh, we heartily welcome it. So we're excited about that. Again, it's early definition uh, at the moment, uh, but we, we hope to, to uh, be closing down on that in the coming month. And then lastly, uh, we've got chair and TL nominations and elections coming up. Uh, two of the chairs, myself and Richie Hartman, uh, are up in the April-May timeframe. Uh, and we desperately need additional technical leads and or contributors. Uh, we have a lot of different things and issues to find uh, that are open for uh, contribution. Uh, and uh, that's it. Any questions or? Nice. I put in the chat, I can organize a Hubble presentation for you. <laughs> I figured <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> okay. Anything else for? Okay, let's move on to runtime. All right, tag runtimes. Um, uh, in terms of, well, this is our first uh, uh, presentation for the year. So, in terms of uh, projects and uh, and communities. Um, we're talking to a few projects uh, in the containers and runtime space. Uh, we're going to have a presentation of Enclavera containers. Uh, this is uh, a take on confidential computing, uh, and it's mainly from the folks uh, at Intel. So excited to see that. That's going to be next month, uh, about a month from now. And on the workload space, we had ClusterNet present on, or we, we're having ClusterNet present on February 17th, uh, two weeks from now. This is a project that allows you to uh, manage um, multiple Kubernetes clusters or, or a fleet of Kubernetes clusters. Um, excited to, to see that project. Um, Knative is another project 
uh, in the scope of this the tag and they're having a presentation in our next meeting. Uh, they're going through incubation and I think the due diligence has been completed and the public um, comment period has been open. Uh, and so um, if you have any comments about the project, feel free to comment on the mailing list. Uh, so this, this project has been uh, without a foundation for a while, so I'm excited to see this uh, join the, the CNCF. QVERT is another project that is going through incubation, and we just completed the due diligence document, and that will be uh, shared with the, you know, the rest of the community, the rest of the TOC, and um, public comment period, I think, uh, will be open pretty soon. Then open cluster management, another project that is very similar to ClusterNet. Uh, so it allows you to manage a, a fleet or a large number of Kubernetes clusters. So we had a presentation from them at our, in our last meeting. This is uh, already a CNCF sandbox project. Then on the AI, IoT, Edge, MLOps space, we had a presentation from K0S. This is a project very similar to K3S. This is a way to run in Kubernetes in the Edge. Uh, they do have some differences. So if you're interested, you can take a look at the project. Um, they haven't thought about applying uh, for the CNCF, but uh, something to, uh, you know, look uh, in the future, maybe they, they will apply. And then in terms of uh, activities in the tag, uh, we're excited to have uh, Alex Konevsky join the tag as a, as a tech lead. Uh, so he brings in about 20 or plus years of experience. He works at Intel, uh, working in open source and working in containers and, you know, uh, making sure that you know you you have some capabil capabilities developed in in the container uh, ecosystem then we have a, a working group the in progress the batch system initiative uh, we are working on the charter so we expect that hopefully uh, to be done by the end of this month and finally we have um, KubeCon EU uh, presentation in the planning stages, so that hopefully to, uh, that will help uh, continue to increase the engagement of the community. That's all that I have for the updates, and I'm happy to take any questions. And if not, I'll hand it off to the next stack. Hello, everyone. Um, we have a few updates. We're doing a lot of reorganization within the group to make sure that we're staying on task and actually uh, getting a lot of things accomplished. So first up, uh, Cloud Custodian review is complete. We just have a few more um, checks to go through before we can merge that into the repo. We've started ramping up for an Argo review. This is a very large project. It's actually consistent of four sub projects that we will be reviewing sequentially due to um, low reviewer count. So if you are interested in participating in a security review, you don't have to be a security person. Um, we are more than happy to mentor and talk through that. Um, we're looking for more security reviewers. We're also working on refocusing our roadmap. So last year we had a very large um, plan and a very big goal of a lot of things that we wanted to accomplish. Unfortunately, we did not get them all done. We do have a lot of projects in flight though. So we're looking to close all of those out and kind of rescope so that we have a more uh, manageable target of about two to three projects per quarter. And lastly, we wanna welcome Pushkar to our uh, security tag leadership team he has been an active uh, contributor within the security tag for a number of years and we're very happy to bring him into the leadership team that's everything thank you emily um and also thank you to ricardo who i didn't say thank you to before <laughs> uh any questions for security okay Text 
storage. Hello. Um, so some updates on the the projects. Um, Chubao FS, uh, we had, uh, we're scheduling um, an updated presentation um, from the project. Um, we've concluded the DD review. Um, there were a few questions um, from from TOC, and one of the things that came up was that they're that they're proposing quite a big update of the project, and it includes a rename. Um, so we're going to be they're going to be presenting that uh, to the tag on our next uh, not the next call, the call after the next call, um, and uh, and we'll report back after that. I, I, I don't anticipate that. It, will materially affect the DD, but it, it's obviously sort of um, something we kind of need to capture in that process. Um, Open EBS, um, we've had a meeting with the team. The team still wants to proceed with the process. We have some questions open with them around um, some of the changes that have happened um, following, uh, following data cores acquisition of, of Maya data and some of the team uh, changing roles or, or, or moving to different firms. So, so we just want to sort of see what the status is on the various um, different components of that, of that project and see whether um, we still want to proceed with the, uh, with the move from Sandbox to incubation. Um, the curve storage system, um, that had gone for a um, for a uh, for a sandbox approval, um, and the TOC had asked that they uh, that they present the, the project. Um, they had presented um, just before Christmas, um, and it was it's it's very large it's a very large project uh, with lots of components and lots of functionality. Um, under very active development with, with a number of large production systems. Um, and we, we actually had to schedule a follow-up call to kind of go through some of the, some of the more uh, technical parts of the components, which, um, which, was, which was extremely interesting. At, at this stage, um, I think there is uh, nothing from, from the tag point of view to, to stop. Uh, recommend uh, recommendation to move this into into sandbox. It is um, it is a very interesting system with with both sort of block and, and file system uh, capabilities, um, with uh, good integration um, with sort of cloud native uh, cloud native components. Um, and I think there's a lot of promise here. Um, there, you know, some rough edges that 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 the team are working on, but. Um, I think it definitely meets all of the criteria for sandbox. So, so I'd like to um, I'd like to sort of supply that feedback back to the TOC for the next um, for the next sandbox uh, review. Um, we've we've also um, not on this list, but we've we've also had um, a session with the cartographers um, team, um, and uh, we have we have. In principle, committed to uh, to providing them with with an update and um, and some and some text to their maturity model in relation to, um, to some of the storage um, sections, um, which which we're hoping to deliver to them around the March um, timeframe, um, so that uh, they can be reviewed and made available before KubeCon EU, um, and then finally following some of the planning sessions um, that we had uh, at the end of the year, we're, we're setting up um, a number of uh, project updates. Uh, and the first, the first one was, was Vitesse, which, which we had uh, last week, which, which was a, a, really great, um, a really great update and definitely worth watching the recording if, if you're interested in that project. We're going to be scheduling more of those um, uh, presentations and, and updates um, on some of those uh, storage projects as we go forward to the, the the list is in the in the tag meeting minutes and I think that covers our update unless there are any questions that's great thanks Alex and uh, I think particularly for 
working the way through all these different incubation proposals and uh, helping us navigate the differences between them. Brilliant. Thank you. Any other questions on that? Okay, should we look at the project status? Should we just have everyone who's on the call let us know? So maybe we'll start with Elena. Actually. Who, who is actually here? So, yes. Who may be having mute troubles. <laughs> Elena, are you here? <laughs> She's trying to un unmute. Oh. Microphone issues all around. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we work with your microphone issues for Elena. Um, let's move to Justin. Who may also be having trouble as well. Um, so oh, you don't have trouble. Excellent. No, I don't have trouble. No. So <laughs> in Toto is, uh, I think, coming out of public comment tomorrow. Yes. I think that's right. So um, yeah, and GRPC, I will do a handover if I'm not reelected. Okay. That right. sounds perfect. Um, I, I've put a note on this slide just for full transparency. I am holding that particular vote until we get the new TOC sorted. It would yeah. be meaningless to be able to try to be able to open a vote right now. I love all of you, but like, it doesn't make any sense. So if, if anyone has any off. comments, please comment it still. You have a day. And... <laughs> yes, you get slightly longer in public comment. Hooray. Is Harry here? I don't believe so. Nope, I see no Harry, so. Um, I will move on to Ricardo. Yep. So we need one more end user interview to open public comment for Volcano. Uh, the due diligence is finished. And Custodian, uh, we've done a couple of end user interviews and I'll sync, uh, we'll do a sync this week to, to see what's the next step. Thank you. Uh, also we have next for Volcano. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See you again? You are next for Volcano. Yeah, yeah, for Volcano, that's, um, that was, that was, uh, the first part was for Volcano, oh, actually. Beg pardon, okay, sorry, yeah. I, was, yeah. I was going in order. Mm. Yeah, so Custodian, Custodian is, um, um, is moving uh, forward and we'll do a sync this week. And Volcano will be, we just need one more in this interview that should happen in the next couple of days to, to still open the public comment very soon. Yep. Amy, Elena, I'm, are you good? Yeah, yeah. I'm back. <laughs> no, no, it should work. Um, so for, for QVERT, uh, the DD is done, the end user interviews are done. I'm planning to open the project for public comment period this week. And we open have metrics have passed. We're still working with the team to be able to figure out how to announce. That's yeah, that's open metrics, now. and yeah, it, it's been uh, it's, it's about an announcement. Yeah, great. Um, Cornelia, um, I believe, is not with us. Go ahead, Liz. I was going to say we're missing backstage, which is with me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I have done three user interviews. We're in reasonably good shape. I am shooting for us to have that due diligence document done by the end of the week when I stop being on the TOC and then someone else will have to take it over through the public comment. But hopefully there will be someone on the new reconstituted TOC who's prepared to do that because I will have done all the legwork. <laughs> it's looking in good shape. We will find someone that is completely fine. Um, that's kind of the important stuff that I wanted to be able to cover for projects applying to move levels. And All right. Questions. Oh, we never get time for questions. This is great. Uh, one sec, Amy. I think uh, we missed... Uh, oh, K-Native. You're right. Uh, yeah, K-Native, uh, you know. I it's in public comment. It's in public. Right, right. The other one was uh, projects waiting for sponsors. I think Spiffy, Spire, um, there was a PR open. Yes, that just came in. Um, my thinking around that one is that that's meaningful to be able to look probably like the the uh, the meeting on the fifteenth. 
um, because there's plenty of things that people want to be able to review. And again, our new reconstituted TOC will have more to say about that. Unless somebody wants to be able to like actually sponsor here, which I was not going to put you all in the spot for. <laughs> Seeing no one throwing up their hands, I'm going to treat that as probably like the right way to be able to go. We'll take care of all of them. Other questions, comments? I will take this moment to be able to thank Liz very officially and very, very formally and, and warmly for being our chair for this year. Um, yes. Thank you and very much. Thanks to um, Saad and Shang, who are also stepping down after this. This is your, your last meeting with all of us. So thank you so much. Thank you for your work. Um, I'll be formally closing the elections this afternoon and confirming a new TOC. And thank you. Big thank you to Saad and Shang as well from me. And uh, yeah, I won't be going far away. So, uh, you know, you'll see me around. As for the other two yeah. seats, we'll see what happens. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. <sighs> Wonderful. All thank right. you, folks. Think... It's been a huge, huge honor. Thank you. Yay. Shang, did you want to say something? Yeah, thank you. I said thank you. Thank you. It's been great <laughs> working with everyone. If we, now we need to make that emeritus mailing list and make sure you're all around. <laughs> uh -huh. That is going to be my next thing is being able to make sure that all of the emeritus have like access into um, uh, emeritus can come in and weigh in on projects and let everybody know as far as like, hey, if there's something that we should be thinking about that we're not, we want to hear from you. Brilliant. I hope we get special t-shirts for that role as well. <laughs> I'll think of something. I'll think of something. <laughs> Plus one. Plus one. Finding. <laughs> I know. I know. I wore it especially. <laughs> Plus one non-binding shirts. Yeah, yeah we, could, we could work on that one. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. You get a few more minutes back in your day today. So, um, yeah, take care. See you soon. Thank you Bye -bye. all. Good to see you all. Bye, everyone. Bye.